Uh, moving into what we're talking about, though, is we got the weekend stories, mm. Oldham. Did you expect him to win something? I, th I think what's really cool about Pro Tour is, oh, this is the fourth major tournament between Pro Tour 1, 2, uh, Worlds, and this one. Mm. Four different people won the whole thing. Four different heroes won the whole thing. Yep. Oldham's probably always been around but never made it to the top. And then somebody just came, comes and just destroys a Dragon Lady on national TV to take it all down for round one. That's Michael Fang. It was, it was definitely a, a, a massive story arc for Michael Fang, how he progressed through the bracket, his discipline, his training that got him there. Um, did I expect Oldham to win? Not necessarily. I would have put my money more on a Ranger or on Odrum I, but uh, Michael Fang was really composed, knew what he was doing, and was able to pilot a really clean Oldham into the finals and be a really good Dramai player who probably had the advantage, but he was able to pull it back and, and, and figure out that win. So uh, Oldham wins PT. Uh, I think it's just mostly due to the player. The player really shined in that specialization of the Oldham knowledge. Right. And then right after that, everyone was like, well, don't worry. We're not going to have to do this meta ever again mm. because we're going to have massive changes. And then there was nothing. No changes. I no think changes. Some people bet on that, but not everybody bet on that, that there'd be no changes. Someone's like, maybe they hit Ranger. Maybe they do like a Codex. One Codex. They don't need nine, but maybe one Codex or Rain Razors, but nothing happened. They like the the meta as is. Lexi didn't win Pro Tour. Maybe it would have been different if Lexi won Pro Tour, but... And I, I think there's some arguments online where I, I kind of think this too, of like, well, we, we didn't ban some of these other cards for literal half a year or a whole year. Why would we ban the one for Ranger in 35 days? Like, yeah. that doesn't truly make sense. It's like, can you play, just put Sinks and Fates in your deck now, and that's all you got, and mm -hmm. Oasis, and now we're just going to shut out Lexi's, or people just start playing Uzuri, or, like, there's all kinds of different permutations of what could possibly go on, and it's something where it's like, okay, well... Let's have that happen. I, I know there's people at the bottom of the leaderboards being like, I, I know there's Ryan Archat going like, they, there, there's a specific saying they said in the band of like, we're ready to let the meta take itself forward and see what happens. Yeah. And all the people in brew chat are like, take, take this forward by just auto losing to like the best deck without any recourse is kind of annoying. Cause it's like Lexi can do a 25 damage turn after you've already blocked 12. So it's like, cool. It, it's definitely hard when you have those oppressive decks that, you know, you feel are getting like just romped on, you know, like just they're overly killing you or overkilling you and it's not as close to games. But everyone's had their time in the sun. You've seen this with Runeblade. You've seen this, uh, you know, with uh, Illusionist. You, so you, I think that you just have to let them enjoy that time for now and trust that LSS wouldn't make it uh, unhealthy enough to work it where everyone's having a bad time. Once again, right. Ranger didn't win um, didn't win the Pro Tour. Um, there are natural counters uh, out there. Yeah, that, that's something where it's like, oh, one person forgets to shoot an arrow or, or doesn't draw their card exactly right. That doesn't make the deck worse. Yeah. It means like one game for 25 grand over 50 grand and like mm -hmm. is, oh, don't worry, Lexi was... 65% of the meta share wins or whatever that number is where you're just like, geez. I, I think the funniest thing that happened about this is all the people that were like, see, I told you, Azalea is... The, and it's like, yeah, you got pushed. And now even with the push cards, it's like Azalea is maybe still the fifth or sixth best hero where you're like, how did that happen for you? Where we see the, the raw power of Azalea not really go through in a major tournament when people are drafting and playing at the highest level. Um, yeah, uh, I, I definitely think you you just have to have the bracket stack up, right? And like you said, maybe it was that one game they didn't play the era, or one game that this doesn't go right. And that's card games. You know, that's always going to be a factor is that it's a combination of how good of a pilot you are and how lucky you are. Right. You cannot never not get around the luck part, you know? Um, so... Um, and Oldham's just going to be lucky because he runs 97 blues yeah, and blue. has 15 defensive options for every situation. But I would say the Age of Ice is coming to an end where you see things like uh, Islander not being prevalent in the meta anymore, Oldham becoming more towards those LL, getting bans, um, and Lexi being less on a fuse build and more on a straight damage build. So that will open up more options, and I think people should explore those options to start racing instead of you know being too heavy on blues. Um I'm excited to see the meta evolve, and I think it will continue to evolve, and we'll see more of that today as well. Um, different 
different kind of represents for what we're going to see today is everybody has their pet deck and oh i'm excited to play um pursuit of knowledge and we're going to try this yeah. but then you like okay what are the actual good lists from pro tour yeah uh, these people are putting their these pro quote unquote pro players are putting their deck list out there they're telling you their sideboard you're going like okay well i wanted to run nine codex but i guess i could run five specific ones in these matchups, the specific way that I've been taught to, I've been I've been taking coaching with co with coach and yeah. oh my god, like uh, with my coaching and my deck list and the sideboards, there's no way I can lose today. Maybe there's seven people that are stepping into this forty dollar arena and saying I have put in some practice to ruin your day. I think that you know the 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 level of competition here is definitely competitive casual where people are gonna try their best. They want to be great pilots, but they're not gonna be too hard sharking or trying to do anything that's more effort than it would take to win, you know, local. I'm not trying to BM anybody. So um, I think I think we'll see just some more fun things like you're saying, like one of Pursuit of Knowledge or one of Lunging Press, which you'll see a lot of one ofs in the Pro Tour decks. You see, I, I remember uh, Zach, uh, Zach who top aided with um, Viserai in the calling, he had like a one of runic reclamation, which was very interesting to me as a rune plate to see. But you're seeing more of those 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 spices come into play now that the meta's kind of figured out. You need to have more mix ups ready for people. Right. You know, and and I think this this is how we could bridge this to the the RTN season begins. Like the Zach Bun list, everyone was like, "Oh my god, a Viserai top to calling." It's like. Yeah, brother, this hero's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> you guys just want to play the easy stuff without putting in gallons and gallons of work into your specific hero. Like, yeah. there's still Revel and Runeblade. There's still decks that play reds instead of blues. Yep. You, you can high roll anyone in the game if you play the right order of your cards from Sonata. Like, I, I don't know why people would be surprised by that here. And it's like, well, he's a C tier hero. Well, it's like. Jim exists, and like some of the heroes that are A's, like oh, uh, is it Oldham? Okay, I just beat Oldham because of how I set up my deck this way. It's like goodbye, and then this explosive power of cash in to Super draw two cool. cards and yeah. keep it going, keep it going. Like you're basically building your own skeleton mini turn from a cash in and a sonata. And the longer the chain is for Runeblade, the better. Usually, you get so much value out of it. So. Decks like that always have, it, but the same thing could you could say for Reinhardt. Mm. Reinhardt, mm. yeah, Reinhardt has always been regarded as like a lower tier hero, but he's still valid in the meta. He's still top eight if you can have a good pilot who can get the right matchups, right. you know. So, um, I think you'll see more of those things, uh, especially going into RTN season. More specialists come out and just start trying to disrupt the meta with what they know versus right. trying to play around what you have. Because I think the thought process is we got a main triangle of. Let's not say Azalea. We got Ranger. Not say Ranger. It's Lexi. Lexi is one side of the triangle. Mm. Oldham's over here. Droma is on this one. And then if you're playing a deck that isn't one of those three that commits to the triangle of I eat up Lexi's, Lexi's eats it's up Oldham. Yeah. Oldham should be able to figure out Droma unless you built your, your Oldham deck wrong. It's like if you're playing a hero that isn't one of those three, you need to beat two of those three and pray Correct. into Jim. Correct. I think that's exactly how it feels right now. And I know there's people who are at this event who are, are hoping for that triangle to be in their favor today. Right. Um, and that's something where it's like, if you're praying into a triangle, you can only really be good against one of the triangle if you're one of the other triangle, but you just beat all the other heroes. Right. Which is kind of frustrating of like, oh, I'm Dromai. I'm just going to auto walk over some of these other heroes that aren't prepared for my deck list. Yep. Same thing with Lexi of like, do you not have disruption or defensive and there's no point in blocking against lexi you have to disrupt her what type of meta with oldham coming out and islander coming out do you think that we're in right now what, what, how would you describe it? is it a mid-range meta is it an aggro meta how do you feel this meta is, is shaping out to be post outsiders i i think it's interesting because whenever you are playing a deck that folds to a lexi or a katsu you are kind of like, how do you ever lose to another hero? Yeah. Because you were beating me so bad on some of this stuff. But then you're like, I'm going to target you with maybe an Azuri list. An Azuri just can completely dumpster Alexi where you're like, it's true. oh, this works. So I think it is a prove it meta of like, you're going to you're gonna do 38 damage between a turn, prove it. And it's up to me to prove the ability to disrupt you from doing that. Gotcha. Because if you're like, 
put a card in my arsenal, pass, I'm going to build up a six-card hand. You don't do anything to me besides an Anothos swing for six and a pummel for Anothos for ten. Like, that's all you have in your hand. Yeah. Who cares? Who cares? But if you do, here's a Spinal Crush. Mm -hmm. Now you can live for another turn or whatever. So I am expecting maybe some Guardians to just... Everybody loves Guardian here. So is there is there three Bravos here that it's going to be like the Lexi player comes here ready to just 35 everybody and then spinal into spinal into crippling and then you're like, why did I show up here? Well, it is SoCal. There's going to be Guardians. I think you not coming to this event and expect not to play against a Guardian would be foolish. There's just Guardians everywhere, I think, in most metas. I think they're, you know, the mid-ground. Guardians love playing Guardian. I very scared for them to get new things. I um, love it. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, um, so they'll always be around, so you're always going to have to ex expect, you know, that mid-range fight for sure. And Azuri loves that mid-range fight. Has San Diego got Katsus yet or not quite? We've had Katsus fall in and out. Um, I don't think there's anyone who's, I would say, a dedicated ninja main at the point in time who's pushing it. I think you'd probably have some more um, luck up here or in NorCal with, uh, right. uh, I guess, Tao Tao. I don't think Tao Tao is like a dedicated uh, ninja. I, I think mean, he just plays he's, things he likes playing. Playing. Assassin, all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, th I think as soon as a Katsu sits down across from you and then you haven't played them yeah. three times a week, you just lose because you're, you're going to be like, oh, I just block out this. I'll take a surging. And then the surging turns into bonds, into something else. Yep. And it is like now that hero, a five-card hand, turns into a six-card hand, and then mass is a seven-card. Yep. And then my hero power makes it the right seven card hand. And you're just like, what is going on? And then can you swing back or not? So I, I think more than ever, the die roll, maybe you do go first. If you can do a bunch of damage on opening turn, like a guardian or a Reinar, mm -hmm. you do need a bunch of damage in that first turn where your opponent can't do anything yep. to even have like, I can't beat Lexi with 40 health, but if she only has 24, now this race is actually a thing I can do. So I, I think that's, that's it's so true that we are in a kind of like you don't have it meta. Like I think you're in an all in meta. Like my all in beats your all in, and we're gonna we're gonna see like like classic like anime fight. Like just give it your all and and right. see who gets out ahead uh, after the, the the dust settles. Um and and that's I think what we're gonna see most players aim for is there's gonna be blocking blocking, all in switch the tempo. Um it's gonna be through a Katsu through Alexi. Uh, Reinhardt can't do it that well because like mid range decks just struggle to be able to punish that opening. They can only hold the tempo. I mean, I think one of my favorite things yeah. to do about Flesh and Blood is to completely be like, this is like a fighting game but card game. Yeah. And so if you're a fighting game fan, there's an idea of one touch one touch death combos. Okay. Where you're just like, I can put all my resources into if I be if I get a window and I hit you. I can cash in a bunch of damage. Okay. And I feel like that's kind of the idea of where we're at of like, if your opponent draws a sigil or has a no block in their hand, or maybe there's even something like an oasis without the tunic trigger up, it's like you need to cash in this damage as much as possible. Yep. And if you do that twice a game, you're probably going to win. Yep, I think I think you're correct. You got to be good with your blocks. You're like in a Street Fighter era of just having to knowing knowing your block and look for that opening. I, I I've been practicing with some people and I'm helping coach some people on on certain room blade things. And that was the one thing I noticed for sure is that I was really trying to break the fundamentals. Is like make sure you're blocking correctly, and then right here you'll you'll find the break. And then right when you get that break is when you just Mordred Revel just go all in, and then you'll be able to dash ahead right there and just do that. You said that death touch combo of just finishing them off. Because Mordred is like a zero for seven in the right yeah it's a lot of, of free tendies of ideal 100 percent. it's a lot of free tendies and uh it's so good against dromai even so that's another part is is playing you know this right part of that triangle you're really good against dromai and then just like hate playing against rangers and then right. um so it, it's going to be such an interesting meta i'm excited to see what people are bringing um today for sure i'm wondering how many ninjas we're going to have how many rangers we have are is there any wizards still left ab checking people that's always i mean that that's like literally that's what happens at these tournaments yeah. of like everyone goes oh well this is clearly what we're going to do and then somebody like shows up 5 minutes late and brings kano and you're like okay <laughs> like <home. laughs> we'll play them in the third first three rounds yeah. uh what we do have coming up though for our final topic we're talking about is next month, this is going to look a lot cooler because we're not going to be in a, I mean. Fish tank box. 
Collector's Legion is amazing. It's great. But we're going to be in a convention center where you can fit 200-something people. I'm not yeah. not dogging on Collector's Legion. I'm just saying. They don't have a Starbucks that, inside Collector's Legion, but they do have a Starbucks. across the street here. But, yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll be at the, <laughs> the Arcane Gaming Events branded convention center that Pasadena is going to rename for us. Yep. And that'll be next month. It'll be a very big deal. It's going to be, be sick. Because there's going to be a PTI in that battle hardened, obviously. There's going to be a gold foil going yeah. on. And then the next day will be the June version of our tournaments. Yeah, but everyone's going to be there from out of state. It's going to be a lot of money on the line. Uh, there's going to be extra bonuses, maybe more bounties, more giveaways at that time as well. Um, really just kind of a celebration of our community here in California, I think, and, and really excited to uh, be competing for that, that goal for right. PTI locally, you know, not having to fly all the way to Baltimore. I know how much, uh, how much fun that was for a lot right. of people on the West coast, but. Uh, and if you're living in Chicago, cause half of the flesh and blood community lives there for some reason, <laughs> it's like, come take our PTI away from us. If, oh, they if, won't. They won't. if, if uh, it's like, Oh, I could be correct. Come and beat them. Like, they, let's they, go. They, like, they I them. don't think there's a BNR between now and then. So you'll be able to do all this. Yeah. Everyone's going to have their, wow, this really worked during, um, the, what are they called? Road to Nationals. <laughs> yeah. So everyone will know after three weeks of tournaments of like, is this deck good or not in this? So I'm expecting Battle Hardened to be probably the highest level that we're going to see on our stream for a, a long time because yeah. it'll be like everybody's guns are cocked and loaded. and Arizona's going to be yeah. there. Vegas is going to be there. Uh Oregon's gonna be there. Washington's Oregon's gonna coming. Be there. Uh, yeah, we have the Attack Action podcast. Oh, coming out. that's all of Oregon. They're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and oh, they are gonna be there. Yeah. yeah so, Literally. so we're having as many of the West Coast communities that we're in contact with, and the and that we try to get out uh, out here, pro players from that region, maybe even some Canada players. If Canada wants to come out and compete, Jeez, you know, British Columbia, where you at, yeah, bro? Come out, show uh, show us what you got. Uh, it's gonna be a great time, great venue, right. very safe, very clean. Me and you walk around that venue all the time last time it was great i was going to the bathroom so much <laughs> <laughs> so much water there it was, it was uh, great yeah. um i think one thing too is like by then we'll know where worlds is hopefully yeah hopefully. by there we'll know where nationals is so it we will be like this is, yeah. like this will be the last stop of high level competition mm. from our neck of the woods Except for the next, uh, there's ag in august too, or Ju july i don't know if national i guess nationals would be august Nobody we knows. Don't know. right? We don't. Like, like, that's the big thing. You how know, annoying! They, they want to know. Um, <laughs> it is ten fifty-five, so we are going to do our players meeting. All if right. you can see everyone behind us, we're getting ready to go. Those I are, think we we have at least twenty-five people, so we're expecting five rounds. Yep. That's the recap from earlier. Mm -hmm. um, any final thoughts before we get our players meeting going today? I want to see some spice. I want to see some creative expression. Alan is here today. Oh, he's who's the, that? The Alan Chavrez. He's the the bobble man from Pro Tour. Did you not hear about him? Oh no! He's what the, did he do? <laughs> play the titanium bobble in his deck of Pro Tour with Foro and Levia. You know, he's that stuff like that by bringing your one ofs. Is that, that little expression? You know, that that's that's what's gonna make you world famous. I think know? that's my favorite thing that happened was like somebody did all the math and they were like, Ch -ch -ch -ch. here's here's the win loss thing of all the heroes of yeah. what you should do, and like literally alan ruined their graph of like <laughs> what, what what's the hero i should pick up if i want the best win percentage and yeah. it's like the answer <laughs> is levia <laughs> unless you start don't putting, pay attention to the graph putting, yeah, yeah unless you start putting some qualifiers or disclaimers yeah. in there yep. um but that's uh the man in the sky says it's time to shut up for 10 minutes so i'm gonna just yep. take that advice and we'll see you soon i gotta click this button that uh, says back soon long break